Enslaved until his 30s, in the late 1790s, Toussaint Louverture became the leader and figurehead of an uprising of enslaved people that overcame French rule in Saint-Domingue, now Haiti. By 1804, the Haitian Revolution had established the first free black nation in the Western world. Though there are historical images of Toussaint, none are from life. All these historic portraits depend on a white gaze which was notoriously hostile at the time and steeped in racist prejudice. These images show the way the black other was perceived, with the lithograph by Nicolas Morin having the feel of a racist caricature. As a counter to the white gaze offered by the historical prints, imaginings of Toussaint by contemporary artists are important. They reappraise his legacy and memory. It's remarkable to compare them to the historical portraits, where those images give us caricature, physicality, and a one-dimensional story. These offer humanity, realness, hope, tenderness, and even humour. Toussaint, Toussaint represents the uh, 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 freedom symbol. Uh, we were always shocked to see the, the representation of Toussaint because the, those painters in, in Europe never saw Toussaint. Uh, and uh, they have a certain representation of Toussaint that really disturbs us. It's just the, 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 the portrait that I'm based on to paint this one, he, Toussaint was almost like, looked like a, a monkey. <laughs> so I think we have, we have to, to, to make uh, justice to Toussaint by trying to, 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 to paint him to uh, in a better way, I mean, more humans. The guinea fowl in Haiti is, is that, that bird is, is very, very difficult to hunt. It's very cunning. That, that symbol of Toussaint, yeah, it means a lot for us. It represents the, the resistance. My recreation is really about how we avoid reproducing enslaved people as objects in the retelling of these histories and it's very easy to approach this history and see the word enslaved or indeed slave and it becomes a very abstract history and I think finding portraits even if they are imagined of leaders of these rebellions is hugely important, especially when African Caribbean rebel leader representations are few and far between. And this is really about reading history against the grain, really. I wanted to locate this very much within the domestic sphere, and I think it's connecting to the idea that these rebellions were started by people who had very little in terms of physical objects but were using what had been handed down from one generation to the next and that was this need to resist and um, it's a, a basic need and it also recognizes that enslaved people were never passive they were actively challenging their status as chattel as property and they were driving the abolitionist movement and this came from within them rather than the the things that they had to overstate the importance of Toussaint's legacy. His strategic vision transformed resistance into the only example in history of a slave rebellion that led to the successful overthrow of the plantation system. The work he undertook to make Haiti a member of the international community makes him one of the most important figures of the 18th century.